Hey y'all, welcome to Games for Young Minds. I'm Kent here with a game called Tiny Polka Dot. Now, Tiny Polka Dot was developed by a guy named Dan Finkel, who is a real kindred spirit of mine when it comes to the importance of playing mathematical games with kids. So it's not actually a single game so much as it is a deck of cards that was specifically designed to teach your kids as much as possible about number. So once you get the game, you'll actually have access to dozens of different games that you can play with your kids at all different ages. So why don't I show you the cards and then I'll run you through a couple of my favorite games and talk about the awesome math that's contained within them. Let's check it out. So when you open the box, the first thing you'll see are these game cards where each side of each card tells you the instructions of a quick game you can play. Now some of these are for kids as young as three or four. Some of them are challenging for kids seven, eight, or even older. I'll show you a little bit more about these game cards in a little bit. After you look at the game cards, you will find six decks of cards with the numbers from zero through 10 on them represented in different ways. The first way is the purple cards, which have the numerals, the ones that we're most familiar with. And yet remember, these are actually the most abstract ways to represent these numbers. Little kids don't know that that squiggle means five until they've practiced with it a lot. So there are other more concrete representations of number. For example, the teal cards have all the dice representations of the numbers from one through 10. And I had actually never seen dice representations of seven, eight, nine, and 10 until I got this game. The next cards are 10 frames. So these 10 frames are a really common structure that a lot of kids will see in early elementary school. If you've got a kindergartner or a first grader, they've spent a lot of time looking at this sort of representation of seven because it's really helpful in seeing how numbers are structured based on each other. So for example, this seven can be seen as a five and a two, or even as a four and a three. And it also helps you see that if you have seven dots, you only need one, two, three more to create 10. So we have all these 10 frames all the way up to, of course, 10. The next deck is probably best looked at diagonally. So you'll notice some of the dots are green and some of the dots are blue. And as I flip through, you'll notice that some of them appear to be symmetrical or even, and some of them look a little a little asymmetrical, a little odd. And these, these cards are really useful if you're gonna talk about what even and odd means with a little kid. The next deck is a little atomic looking in my opinion. It's just a bunch of circles arranged around a larger circle. And I think they're really pleasing to look at. And then we come to the green cards, which are just a mess. All the dots are different sizes. They're in totally different arrangements. There seems to be no connection from one card to the next. And it's really hard to count these dots without just going one by one and counting them. There's no structure, right? If you look at this 10 right here, I see a four, a two, and a four. And I can count those in my head faster than this, where I actually have to count by ones. And that's part of the beauty of these cards. The reason there are so many different representations is because for a kid to understand what 10 means, they need to see it in a lot of different contexts, a lot of different ways. Because if you just see 10 looking like this, or you just see 10 looking like this, then you'll think that 10 requires two rows of five to be 10, but that's not true at all. In fact, if you showed a little kid these two cards and said, these two cards are the same in some way, well, they might say, well, they both have dots on them, but otherwise they look totally different. These are arranged in a nice orderly fashion around a circle. These are all over the place, and yet they share something important in common, which is their tenness. And that's why mathematically these cards are so great. But they're not just great mathematically. They're also just bright and colorful and fun. They're, they're thick enough for little hands to play with easily, way better than playing cards in that regard. And that's why there are so many great games that you can play with them. So let's check out one of those games. We've got dot five memory. So this game, it shows you how many players, one through six players. It's for ages five and up. And for the first game, we are supposed to play with the teal cards from zero through five and the blue cards from zero through five. So I'm gonna get those cards ready, get this game going and show you how it works. Okay, so I took the cards, I shuffled them up and I arranged them in this three by four grid. Now the way you play dot five memory is pretty similar in structure to any matching game, but instead of trying to figure out if this Marvel character matches that Marvel character, you're trying to pick two cards that add to five. So I'll just flip over this card. Let's see, that's a four. So now I'm looking for a one. Now there's a couple ones out there, but the benefit of the game is if you flip over another card that has a one represented in a different way, that still counts as a match. This is four, this is one, they add to five and I get to keep it. And now I get to go again since I matched to five. So I'll flip over this one. This has a two and this card has a five. So two plus five does not work. I don't get that match. And now it's the next person's turn.
Now, this game still has all the enjoyment and challenge of a normal memory game. You still have to sharpen your visual memory to remember, okay, the middle card on the left-hand side has a two. I gotta remember that for later. But it also has the added mathematical benefit of getting kids working with numbers within five. And that's a huge concept in kindergarten. Pre-K spends a lot of time on it, and it's great to find a fun and creative way to play with those ideas. Another benefit of this game is it can become more sophisticated as your kids get more comfortable. So once my son was comfortable adding to five, we started putting in more cards and adding to 10. We even did adding to nine, which despite being less than 10 is actually more of a challenge since so many kids spend so much time thinking about what adds to 10, thinking about what adds to nine is actually a little bit more difficult. So now that you've seen this game, I wanna show you something that's a little bit more challenging for older kids. So this activity is called Poke Loop, and it's actually something I've done with my middle school students when we've got, you know, 15 minutes between lunch and the pap rally, and I, I wanna do something that's at least somewhat mathematical. So what I've done is I've gotten all the purple cards from zero through 10, and I've put them in a certain arrangement, and now I'm going to unveil them to you like so. So watch the cards. Zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And then you just point to the cards and say, hey, could you put these back in the proper order so that we could do the polka loop again? I guarantee you, your kids are gonna be reaching for those cards and trying out different strategies, and they're like, okay, okay, maybe if I, if I lay out all the cards in this way and, and, I, and I try this version, they're gonna be doing so much math just trying to figure out this activity. And yeah, if your kids are a little bit on the younger side, then maybe you could take out the cards from six through 10 and see if they can do it with zero through five. That's what I did with my son, and it worked a lot better. But I love this activity. I mean, honestly, if you're not already reaching for a deck of cards to try this out, I, I don't know what's wrong with you. It's a really fun puzzle to figure out. And that's just two of the games that I've shown you so far out of 16. And that doesn't even count all the other games you could play. You can play War with these cards, you can play Go Fish. There is truly no limit to what you can do with these cards. And the whole time, your kids are gonna be connecting different representations of number with each other. It's gonna help their flexibility with thinking about number in such a wonderful way as they get through kindergarten, first grade, second grade, and beyond. I can't recommend these cards highly enough. I think they are fantastic. So if you pick up these cards and you come up with a really cool variation on a game or something I haven't thought of, or just have a wonderful experience, I would I'd love to hear about it in the comments. And as always, you can sign up for my newsletter to get a weekly game recommendation. The entire archive is at my website, gamesforyoungminds.com. So have a great time and remember to play games and ask questions. I'll see you soon.